Simons and Shoppery's 1999 Visual Inattention. Background. Inattentional blindness, also known as change blindness, is a phenomena where an observer often fails to perceive an unexpected object or event, even if it appears in the area that the observer is observing. If their attention is focused on another object or task, or the object is not the center of interest in the scene. Previous research has shown that individuals who are engaged in a task where they had to focus their visual attention on one particular aspect of an event or scene were significantly less likely to see an unexpected event that occurred during the task, despite that event being clearly visible to other observers who watched the same scene but who were not required to focus on any particular aspect. This seemed to suggest that attention is an important factor of an individual's ability to detect a change in a particular scene. Some researchers have theorized that a task that is visually demanding can often load the brain so that an individual becomes increasingly blind to any information that is irrelevant to the task, causing inattention blindness to occur and making it less likely that the individual will be distracted from the task. This makes sense in the context of everyday life, since we are all surrounded by clutter and more objects than we can react to simultaneously which means that our brains have to selectively allocate attention to important objects or tasks. Previous research played an important role in understanding perception, with and without attention. However, the researchers in the study by Simon and Shabriz wanted to test the same concepts, but with a more empirical approach, which they felt was lacking in some of the more recent studies. AIM the researchers had several aims that they wanted to investigate in the study in relation to inattentional blindness. 1. To investigate whether the difficulty of the task that participants were required to focus on would have an effect on inattentional blindness. 2. Whether the visual similarity of the unexpected object in relation to the attended object would have an effect on inattentional blindness. And 3 whether a superimposed version of the scene would have a different effect compared to a live version of the scene in relation to inattentional blindness. Sample. The sample consisted of 228 people, mostly undergraduate students. Each of the participants either volunteered to take part without compensation, although some of them received a candy bar for participating, or were paid a single fee for participating in a larger testing session, which included another unrelated experiment. After the study was over, data from 36 participants were discarded for various reasons, so the results were used from 192 participants, distributed equally across 16 conditions. Methodology The study was a laboratory experiment, which used an independent measures design, with participants taking part in only one of 16 different conditions. The groups included 1. The transparent umbrella or gorilla conditions 2. The opaque umbrella or gorilla conditions Each of the groups were then subdivided into 3. White shirt, easy or hard and 4. Black shirt, easy or hard The dependent variable was the number of participants in each condition who noticed the unexpected event either the person dressed as a gorilla or a person holding an umbrella Procedure in order to ensure that the procedure was standardized, a written protocol was created, which detailed exactly how the experiment should be run and given to the 21 experimenters. Each participant was tested individually and allowed to give informed consent to take part. Participants were told that they would be watching a video that featured two teams of three basketball players passing an orange ball between them and that they should focus their attention on either the team in white or the team in black. They were then either told to keep a silent mental count of the total number of passes made by the team that they were watching, the easy task, or to keep two separate silent mental counts of the number of bounce passes and aerial passes made by their team, the hard task. The players in the video were situated in front of a bank of free elevator doors, and they would also dribble the ball, wave their arms, and make other movements consistent with the flow of the game, in addition to passing the ball between each other. After around 44 to 48 seconds, one of two unexpected events occurred in the video, depending on the condition. In the umbrella condition, a tall woman holding an open umbrella walked through the scene, from left to right. In the gorilla condition, a person wearing a gorilla costume, fully covering their body, walked through the scene in the same way. Each unexpected event lasted just 5 seconds, 
and the behaviour of the basketball players was unchanged for the duration. There were two styles of videos. One was rendered partially transparent, with the white team, black team and the unexpected event being filmed separately, and then superimposed on one another to create the full scene. The other was completely opaque with no transparency at all, with both teams and unexpected events all being filmed simultaneously. After they finished watching the video, the participants were then asked to write down their silent mental counts on paper, and were asked a number of questions including While you were doing the counting, did you notice anything unusual in the video? Did you notice anything other than the six players? And did you see a gorilla, or a woman carrying an umbrella, walk across the screen? If participants answered yes in response to any of the questions, they were then asked to provide a verbal description of what they had noticed. If at any point before the third question the participant correctly mentioned the unexpected event, either the gorilla or the woman carrying an umbrella, the remaining questions in the sequence were skipped. After the initial questions, participants were asked if they had previously participated in any similar experiments, or had heard of the phenomenon of inattentional blindness. If they had responded yes, their results were discarded from the study. The participants were then debriefed at the end of each session, which included the ability to replay the video if requested. Each session lasted between 5 and 10 minutes. Results As previously mentioned, after the study, several participants' data had to be discarded for various reasons. For example, some of them reported during the question stage that they had in fact heard of inattentional blindness, while others said that they had lost count of the number of passes. A total of 54 of all participants noticed the unexpected event, with 46% not noticing, demonstrating a significant level of inattentional blindness. The participants in the opaque conditions were more likely to notice the unexpected event, with 67% noticing, compared to the transparent condition where only 42% noticed. For the task difficulty variable, those in the easy condition were more likely to notice the unexpected event than those in the hard condition, with 64% of easy task participants noticing, compared to 45% of those who had the hard task. It was also found that participants in the umbrella task were more likely to see the unexpected event than those in the gorilla task, 65% versus 44%. However, it was found that participants who attended to the black shirt team were more likely to notice the gorilla compared with participants attending the white shirt team, 58% versus 27%. In contrast, there was very little difference between the number of participants who attended the black shirt and white shirt teams in how likely they were to notice the umbrella woman, 62% versus 69%. Conclusions Based on the results, the researchers concluded that roughly 50% of people will fail to detect an unusual and unexpected visual event if they are focused on a different task that requires their visual attention. Objects are able to pass through an area that is subject of someone's attention and not be noticed if they are not being attended to. The researchers also said that the phenomena of inattentional blindness occurs more frequently in cases where a scene and the unexpected event are superimposed, but that it is also a feature of live action events, just to a lesser degree. The level of inattentional blindness that occurs is also partially dependent on the difficulty of the task that the observers have to attend to. The harder the task, the more likely they are to not notice an unexpected event. Observers are also significantly more likely to notice an unexpected event that shares basic visual features with the object that they are observing, for example, similar colours. Overall, the researchers said that the results demonstrate that there is no conscious perception without attention, and that inattentional blindness is a ubiquitous perceptual phenomenon that can occur regardless of how a scene is appearing. Evaluations The study by Simons and Shabris was a laboratory experiment, which meant that there are high levels of control. The researchers ensured that the procedure was standardised by writing a protocol which detailed exactly how the experiment should be run and distributed it to the experimenters. This also helped minimise any extraneous variables and makes the experiment highly replicable. The study collected a lot of quantitative data by calculating the percentages of participants in each condition who noticed the unexpected event. This means that the results could be easily compared and analysed, and help to make the experiment more reliable. The research is also arguably very useful, since it may potentially help explain why some people fail to notice objects that are unexpected, 
If their attentional focus is on something else, for example, a traffic accident where someone failed to see another car. However, one could argue that the results from the transparent condition are less applicable to real life, since most of our interactions take place in a fully opaque surrounding. In reality, people do not usually encounter a scene where the objects they're focusing on are partially transparent. This could therefore reduce the study's ecological validity somewhat. The study used a very large sample of 192 students who were recruited via a volunteer sample. The fact that the sample size was large means that the study's conclusions are more generalizable, and volunteer samples are a quick, convenient, and easy way to gain participants for the study. However, a possible weakness of this approach is that students are not representative of the entire population as a whole, and so the sample is lacking in population validity. Moreover, the students were all recruited from one university in one location, which may mean that the sample was relatively ethnocentric. In terms of ethics, all participants gave informed consent prior to taking part in the experiment, and were debriefed afterwards with an opportunity to re-watch the video with the knowledge of the unexpected event. This meant that the study was highly ethical.